Bible. And we also can talk about 1 over lambda. And 1 over lambda is both uh, measurable and meaningful. Right? It is measurable because it is basically the, again, I put an average. Later on, as we discuss further, we will just say lambda and the understanding is it is the average. We will not just print or type average anymore. But 1 over lambda is the inter-arrival time that we can actually measure. Assuming that the servers, this is a bank branch, and the servers are the cashier officers right at the, at the desk, and uh, customer will be customers, bank customers, coming into the bank branch to do some transactions. So lambda then becomes the rate of arrival of customers entering the branch. Okay, I think everyone has the familiar scene on mind uh, about how people will spontaneously come in. This is important. They are not artificially sent in by troops or by military arrangement. They, are, they just occur spontaneously. You and I could wake up this morning and suddenly both of us are interested in drawing cash right, from the same bank branch. If we decide to go to a different bank branch, then we won't meet, right? We won't be part of the lambda. Uh, I may do so in the morning and you may do so in the evening. And that may contribute to, uh, to fluctuations in the actual or what I call the instantaneous rate of arrival. Yeah? So I may increase the instantaneous rate of arrival in the morning. You may do so because you, uh, in the evening because you go to the same bank branch but in the evening. However, we both contribute to the long-term average rate of arrival because we did go to the same bank branch today. So on a sort of a uh, averaging to, to the entire day basis, then Lambda will refer will also be affected by our participation in queuing up. So that is the rate of arrival. But the 1 over lambda refers to, uh, yes, of course, it's the reciprocal of lambda, but it also means the time, not the distance, but the times uh, spacing between two consecutive customers. We can, refer, we can think of more, uh, more uh, uh, practically as the, the time interval between two consecutive, and that's important, not two, not not two chosen customers who are separated by three other customers. That's not true. So between two consecutive customers. Remember, because these customers spontaneously want the same uh, service to meet the, the cashier officers to do bank transactions, not necessarily the same thing as in withdrawing cash or, or uh, um, exchanging foreign uh, currency, but to visit the server that is the timing that will be studied so because we both uh, spontaneously want to to have them we will contribute to the customer arrivals increasing lambda and thereby slightly decreasing the time interval right because the same time will instead of having just yourself joining the queue the queue system will have both of us trying to join the queue so the gap between the consecutive customers will be reduced if lambda is increased. In fact, it has to strictly follow the reciprocal uh, relationship. Another quick example, suppose there are four customers on average per hour joining the bank branch. Lambda equals to four. Okay, If lambda is equal to four, then what happens to the average time gap, right, four customers per hour, then the, if we just think by ourselves, logically, the average time gap between consecutive customers must be one quarter hour, right, one quarter hour, which means 15 minutes apart on average. It could be that after the first customer, 20, 20 minutes later, we will see the second customer, not 15, only to find that the third customer came in 10 minutes later, so as to average it up to 15 per, per customer. So you see that that is what exactly we are talking about. The average, it is exactly 1 over lambda, and we must assume that's true, and that's 
more reasonable, right? Without expecting customers to be exactly 15 minutes separated apart. And uh, they can vary so long as the mean, right? The average is preserved to be this constant. So that is a slightly more relaxed, nevertheless, as a, still a very demanding assumption. Okay, however, it is still achievable in practice, even with random occurrences. That's what, that's what makes this assumption uh, so nice because it makes it constant and therefore the treatment mathematically is easier and uh, yet still applicable because it can still uh, be applied to random occurring events uh, that happen in practice. Okay, so, uh, so this means that the uh, inter, the, the 1 over lambda equals to 1 quarter 15 minutes. Okay, so that will be our starting point of discussion. Then we should also introduce sigma, okay, the service. Now, if imagine we don't have the service. People, customers come in, customers leave. Then this is like a pipe, like a water hose, where water hose come in, water, ho uh, water particles come in, water particles leave. Right? So never mind if there is turbulence inside the hose, water particles mixed up, uh, rotate around and so on and so forth. But eventually, we know that more water droplets will come in, which will push the previously uh, injected water droplets to, be, to exit the hose on the other side of the, of the hose. So if we don't have service, then this is not a queue system. Yeah, because we need to have three components. One of them will be the server. So for servers, we not only need to know the number of servers, which we will assume as one in this uh, discussion, uh, we also need another constant that's called mu, right? To describe the performance of the server. And we only need this number. So mu is the, again, the average rate of servicing. Or service time. We are interested in the timing of the service. So in my bank example, the service is to serve a customer transaction, assuming one customer has one transaction only, right? Um, so the rate of service, the rate of, uh, no, no, rate of service, rate of service, not, not, not service time, rate of service. So that's equal to the uh, average number of customers served per unit time. I think that's more practically explained here. Okay, so number of customers served per unit time, if incoming lambda is 4, and uh, assuming that our our bank example, there, that the customer, there's one customer uh, serving officer, and her service rate, we also call it service rate, Okay. for this particular cash officer is equal to six customers per hour. That means in one hour, she's able to serve six customers. That's her rate of service. Not about the quality. Yeah? <laughs> she could be angrily serving people, but uh, or she could be very nicely serving people. That's not what we are talking about. We're talking about the number of customers she can clear per hour. Okay. Now, of course, that implies that each customer will receive a service time of 1 over mu hours, isn't it? Okay, so just like the counterpart in lambda, we have 1 over mu, which is very meaningful because this means it is the average service time on a per customer basis, always on a per customer basis. All right. But it also is measurable because we could take a stopwatch. The moment you meet the cashier officer, restart the stopwatch. The moment you finish the transaction and leave the bank branch, we stop the stopwatch. And that will be measuring 1 over mu directly. Yeah. Same thing, we could also stand at the door on the entrance and start our stopwatch the moment one customer enters all right, and then we don't stop until we see the next customer. Then we are directly measuring 1 over lambda. So the 1 over lambda and 1 over mu, 
they are kind of reciprocal kind of uh, abstract notion in mathematics but they are very physical they are very measurable all right and they are very mathematically closely tied with the rate the average rate okay so um, continuing our example if the bank cashier officer has a mu of six then uh, 1 over mu will be equal to 1 over 6 hour and that's correct but of course we can convert that to minutes and say that average customer service time for this cashier officer is 10 minutes now if uh, there is if you are the customer service manager uh, trying to implement policies to make customer experience better you may find that okay this is adequate or you may decide that this is not good too rush if we impose an average time of 10 minutes maybe most of our customers may need more explanation because they're not familiar with our bank services then 10 minutes will force right our customer service officers to be uh, talking like chipmunks very very rapidly without caring whether the customers understand or not and that might not be good so we might want to then uh, you know relax the, the measurements and all that so all these quantified numbers allow us to then make decisions with uh, better support from the quantitative aspects okay so we now have uh, four numbers and we also know they are kind of related what is not related, all right, uh, in, in, a, in a way, is that lambda happens kind of naturally. We cannot force lambda to be higher or lower in a particular situation. Now, lambda, remember, is the arrival of customers. Yeah? Uh, those who have had some prior business experience might say, actually, we can, we can uh, lure, we can encourage lambda to be higher or lower. We can actually control it. In some sense, yes. In some sense, yes. Um, you can, through marketing, uh, give discounts, give freebies, give whatever, right? To say, hey, come to our bank branch. Uh, we are having a festival, free ice cream, whatnot, right? Uh, so you can try to encourage, but will customers bite? Maybe they're busy. Maybe they are having a lockdown, safe distancing. And maybe they are reluctant, despite all the goodies and freebies. Who knows so you can encourage but lambda is kind of a little bit hard to enforce very hard right um, next is uh, if if lambda if we can also set set policies set implement measures that says uh, no more than no more than two customers per hour can enter our bank branch because of strict safe distancing measures right? better than the national uh, uh, imposed measures that is possible too and then you will be artificially creating a ceiling for lambda so that would make however the theory uh, behave in, in strange ways all right because if you, you're artificially controlling lambda when the system is actually allowing for lambda to be uh, random to be spontaneous so that the customers do not collude yeah for example if I have the ability to ask Hey, whole class, let's test out the bank queue management system. Let's all go and queue up to, um, to uh, withdraw cash. All right, let's stress test their system. When we do that and you have to just go along, uh, I'm suddenly spiking, right? Increasing the arrivals by a lot, by a whole class of 50 or 60 people. And of course, that is artificial. That's not random. Then the prediction using the theory again will be unreliable, will fall apart, <coughs> will be inaccurate. Okay, so remember in our assumption, lambda is natural, spontaneous, uh, without artificial settings. On the other hand, mu is very controllable. We can increase mu by replacing our junior officer with a senior seasoned officer who knows. Uh, his or her procedures very well or we can reduce mu by replacing the very senior seasoned officer with an intern who will always ask her customer please hold on let me go behind and check with my manager for every single transaction request if that happens obviously every customer the average service time 
will be lengthened, and that doesn't mean it's a good thing. So what this means is we uh, mu and therefore one over mu are more controllable, are more manageable, can be set by us, uh, the 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 Q system owner, and the theory allows that to happen because uh, doesn't matter whether your mu is high or low, you can.